No. The only thing we did in class is uh, everybody counted how many drops there were in each of the rectangles. Okay, there are eight rectangles. Uh, the eight rectangles you have that don't include the ones right at the edge of the picture. Okay. And we got these results. Okay. One person counted these numbers, another person counted these numbers, and so forth. Now, to determine the most likely number of drops, and we see that there's a fairly wide uh, set of discrepancies here. Some people counted way fewer drops than others. Well, that depends on what you think is a drop. If you think some of these things are just dust particles or whatever, uh, you might not count them. So, <coughs> uh, some people counted more, some people counted less. What I did was I wrote out the medians just to see, <coughs> because I'm curious, if the distribution of drop diameters is a normal distribution. Okay, I can think of good reasons why it would be. And I can think of reasons why, because of the way raindrops fall, they start out as snowflakes and then they fall and then water condenses around the melted snowflake and continues condensing until the raindrop uh, gets to us. Uh, and there are a lot of factors. Uh, the shape of the snow flake, the size of the snowflake that we started with, <coughs> many things, very complex. But does it end up with a normal distribution of diameters? I find that a very interesting question. And uh, if we find that it does appear to be normal, can we explain why that is in terms of the way uh, raindrops form? Well, we're not going to get into the formation of raindrops in this course. But uh, in order to determine whether this number of raindrops is reasonably normal, if it's you know based on uh, our limited single observation, uh, I took the medians of all these numbers. Okay, the median of the first column is 34. That corresponds to the first rectangle. The median count in the first rectangle is 34. In the second rectangle is 43, and so forth. The eighth rectangle, the median was 37. Now, if the number of raindrops falling on a square centimeter or a two centimeter square is normal, if, if the distribution is normal, uh, then the box plot ought to be reasonably consistent with normal. Now, you can't make firm conclusions based on a sample of just eight two centimeter squares, so we're just getting a, a, an overall indication. But uh, I took the median of these medians, got 40.5, you can do the same thing, it's easy. <coughs> and I got the first and third quartile, listed the low and the high, and I got a box plot. Now, I'm going to ask you to do that uh, for homework on uh, uh, some other observations. Uh, and this looks fairly normal. Okay, looks fairly normal. It's fairly symmetric, and the length of the tails and the lengths of these box, parts of the boxes are reasonably uh, consistent. Uh, now, does that really imply that the distribution is normal? Well, it could. Okay. Now, I asked everybody to estimate the diameter of their largest drop. Um, and we calculated, and then calculate the volume. Now, the volume of a sphere is actually four thirds pi r cubed. And I asked people to get the volume of the drop uh, from the estimated diameter of the largest. Okay, well, somebody who estimated a four millimeter diameter would then start by calculating maybe the volume of a sphere of diameter four millimeters, okay? Uh, and the calculation would go as follows. Well, first of all, uh, you've got to be careful. If you use the diameter, your result's going to be eight times too big. Because this doesn't say diameter, this says radius. Well, everybody knows that the radius is half the diameter, so 
we used half the diameter. And if you used the full diameter, you could divide by eight and get the right thing, and you'll see why in a minute. <coughs> if we do four-thirds pi times two millimeters cubed, well, that's close to four-thirds pi times 3.14, pi being about 3.14. And to cube the two millimeters, we cube the two and we cube the millimeters. Two cubed is eight, so we have eight millimeters cubed here. Uh, 3.14 divided by three, that's pretty close to three divided by three, that's pretty close to one, so we have four times eight millimeters cubed, that would be 32 millimeters cubed. But then, of course, we got that 3.14, and that allowed me to raise the estimate to 33 millimeters cubed. Now, that's more precise than anything you would really expect to be the actual volume, because it's really hard to estimate those diameters. <coughs> but based on a four millimeter estimate, this is what we would get for the volume of a sphere, okay? Uh, now, these aren't really spheres. They're actually hemispheres, so we'd have to cut that in half to get the hemisphere. So I'm going to make a note here. Uh, the raindrop, hello Olivia, hey. is a hemisphere. So the drop volume is about 17 millimeters cubed. Half of 33 is 16 and a half. I rounded that up to 17. And then I put that on a table here. From the diameter is 4 millimeters. The sphere has a volume of 33 millimeters cubed. The raindrop has half that volume. Okay, then uh, we used this as a basis. Instead of plugging in three, using a three millimeter diameter or a five millimeter diameter, I did some proportionality reasoning, which we want to talk about briefly. So we'll do that in the next clip.